If you're really trying to break in in Hollywood, you shouldn't be thinking in terms of six months or three months or whatever. You should be thinking in terms of two, three years. When I talk to film schools and stuff, um, well, I, I, I do two things that I, I think you'll like. One is when I'm talking to people, when I'm, I'll talk to classes of directors, right? Aspiring directors. And I'll say, okay, hands up. Who wants to direct television, right? All the hands go up. Great. And I take $20 out of my wallet and I say, here's $20. This $20 goes to the first person in this class, all of you in film school who want to direct television. This $20 goes to the first person in this class who can name a single television director who they do not know personally through family or who isn't the, like, you can't name me because I directed an episode and I'm the showrunner or whatever. You can't name a famous actor. You just need to name like a, a regular television director, a single one who directed the, the your favorite episode of your favorite show, 20 bucks. I have never given away the $20. Wow. That's amazing. Okay? I do the same thing to writers. I'm like, oh, who wants to write for television? Great. Who wrote your favorite episode of your favorite show, right? That was not written by the showrunner or was not written by a celebrity or somebody whose name you know for another reason. 20 bucks. Name one. Never given away the 20 bucks, right? And so the point there is I'm like, okay, great. So you guys are going to, you guys are trying to like network. You're trying to meet people. You're trying to understand the business, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You don't know the person who wrote or directed your favorite episode of television. OK. And beyond that, do you know how many fan letter fan, how much fan mail, right? The executive story editor of, you know, Burn Notice gets for that great episode that they wrote? The answer is zero emails ever. Not one ever. Right. Your favorite director, you know how much they hear about that great episode that they directed? Never ever, ever. And I'm like, okay, so who do people reach out to? They reach out to me when they know I am hiring. Right. And I'm like, I don't mind. I get it. That's the hustle. I completely understand. Right. And I would never criticize anyone for reaching out to me when I'm hiring, because of course you would. Right. But I'm like, that is the worst time to get me to respond to you because I have a thousand friends when I'm hiring. Right. I've got my, my email inbox is always full, right? So, you know, when you could really have gotten a hold of me, anyone, anyone, the day my second show was canceled, right? <laughs> On that day, if you had reached out to me and you were like, hey, I'm a film student in Cleveland at a university with a mediocre film program, but I just wanted to let you know that The Good Guys was my favorite show. And I, my, my favorite episode was episode 11, right? And blah, blah, blah. And I just wanted to say, I'm so sorry that I would have talked to you. Like I was bummed, right? That was when that's the time, right? And so I just find also like, but I guess the thing about that is reaching out to those people, reaching out at that times, at, at those times, that is authentically reaching out to people whose work you actually like right? That doesn't, yeah, it, it, it may be that you're building those connections over the course of a couple of years, but you know this, like if you're really trying to break in in Hollywood, you shouldn't be thinking in terms of six months or three months or whatever. You should be thinking in terms of two, three years, right? And so what are the seeds you're planting now, right? Like who are the contacts you're making? What, how, who are you reaching out to, right? Like if you had reached out to me, um, on the day my third show complications was canceled, right? Well, you would have been meeting me like eight months before my next show went on the air, right? If you'd, if you'd reached out when the gifted got canceled, Turner and Hooch was ramping up nine months later, right? But no one ever, ever, ever does. Right. And, you know, it's like, again, I don't mind, but it's, it's that, it's that thinking long-term 
And also understanding that, you know, showrunners, people with jobs to give out, they're people too, you know, that they, they have the same, you know, they want to know you like their stuff. They want you to, they want to hear that you actually looked at it, all of those things. I know I can't afford you and you're busy, but can you just please come teach my networking class with me? Because I, <laughs> I, I think we, we have a lot of things we agree on and any of my students would be like, oh my God, this is all the crap that Zach teaches us. Maybe he's on to something. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, I'm, I'm in total agreement on all of that and then some that it's just all about how do I build an authentic relationship and you got to play a game of chess. Everybody's playing a game of checkers. I just got to make the next move. Oh no. You gotta you gotta focus on moving the pawn, knowing the checkmate is three years down the road, five yeah. years, ten years down the road, right? And most people just want that next gig, and they don't realize how much more valuable the relationships are if you work on them over time.